So good morning again. Um, today we will continue solving problems in police and uh, we'll spend a bigger part of our time preparing for the test on Tuesday. Today obviously is this last section in in dynamics and it's very important for your upcoming test. So last class we did one example on police. Uh, I'm gonna start off this class with an interesting example we have this is M let me just say 2M this is M we actually have seen a problem like this before but I want to just put it in a more fancy form so this is our pulley and the pulley is massless there is no friction on this surface it's smooth I will label this block this is block 1 this is block 2 and this is block 3 the first thing you need to note is block 1 and 2 move as a unit and the second thing you need to note is the table is smooth part 1 is to derive an expression for the acceleration of block 3. Part 2 is to determine the minimum value of the coefficient of static friction between block 1 and 2 so that they move as a unit in other words so that they do not slide across each other now the very first step in analyzing and solving a problem of this caliber always is to begin with what? A free body diagram so everybody please draw the free body diagram for block 1 block 2 and the block 3 keep in mind that the pulley is massless all right let's do this the system accelerates in this direction the first thing we will note is that we will take the direction of motion to be positive. We will take the direction of motion to be positive. Now, as long as the pulley is massless, the tension in the string remain the same. Let me say that again. As long as the pulley is massless, the tension in the string remain the same. Great. Now, let's do the free body diagrams for the object separately. I'm going to start here with block 1. We have its mass mg, which is the weight acting downward the gravitational pull of the Earth. We have the normal force on block 1. This is n on 1 by 2. And we have the static friction force acting forward. Even though the system is moving, there is static friction. This implies that there can be static friction even if the system is wide, moving. And static friction in this case is the force that accelerates block 1 forward. Static friction in this case is the force that accelerates block 1 forward. On the other hand, 
It is not static friction that accelerates block two forward. It is the tension in the stream. Do you understand that? It is the tension in the stream. Now this is a free body diagram for block one. Now for block two, I have the tension in the stream. I have the weight. This is two mg. I have the normal force due to the earth. This will be N on two by the earth. I have the normal force on two by one. And I have the static friction force on two by one. So this is the free body diagram. For block two. Now for block three. That one is easy. The free body diagram. This is three mg, and that is T. Understand that we will take the direction of motion to be y positive. To calculate the acceleration of block 3, we, this unit will be considered as one block with a total mass of y, 3m. Therefore, we can redraw that system as, and if we do that, this is 3mg, 3mg. N T T This is the direction of motion So for block 2 Or block 1 In this case We have T equal to 3MA For block 2 we have 3MG minus T equal to 3MA This is equation 1 That is equation 2 If we add up these two equations You you will realize that the T's will cancel And this will be 3MG Will be equal to what? 6MA As a result, the acceleration A Will be equal to 3 over 6G which is the same as 1 over 2G this is the acceleration of the system which is the acceleration of block 3 now the next question says that we need to calculate the minimum value for the coefficient of static friction between block 1 and 2 so that the system should move off as one. Another question could be that you should calculate the tension in the stream. Now, though I didn't ask that we are going to go ahead and do that, but before we do that, keep in mind that, look at this expression, the T's cancel out each other. Why is that? Because they are internal forces. And by Newton's third law of motion, internal forces will do what always, cancel out each other and that explains why only external forces are responsible for the overall movement of what a system great now for the tension we know that t is equal to 3 ma which is just going to be 3 m bracket g over 2 so this will give us 3 over 2 mg and that is the expression for the tension in the stream you may see a problem like this in your test so you better pay attention now uh, <clears throat> to calculate the coefficient of friction we need to look at block one and if you see that first of all let me come back here this is block one 
we have here MG N12 FS the summation of Fy is equal to 0 this implies that N12 is equal to MG we also know that by definition Fs is equal to what? mu s n 1 2 which is just going to be mu s mg but block 1 moves in this direction that would imply that the summation of forces is going to be equal to ma in other words fs is equal to ma which means that mu s mg is equal to ma the m's can cancel and the acceleration a is just going to be equal to mu s g how convenient um it, remember that in in the formal slide we showed that a is just half g and now we have shown that a is mu s g this therefore implies that mu s g is equal to halves of what g's and the g's can go away which means that the coefficient of what static friction is 0 0.5 0 0.5 that is the minimum coefficient of what static friction so that the two blocks will slide off as one body all right the next example We have a block, we have a pulley, and this pulley is attached to a movable pulley, and the rope is tied to a ceiling. There, there's a movable pulley down here, of which another block is attached. Let us say that this is M. This guy here is 2M. All pulleys are massless and all surfaces are frictionless. Part 1 of the question says that how does the acceleration of block one related to the acceleration of block two now part b or part two will be to derive expressions for one acceleration of block two <coughs> two the tension in in the stream this is block one and this is block two and this is just one string wrapped around several pulleys Everybody get to work. Part 1 of the question say how does the acceleration of block 1 related to block 2? To give you a hint, look up everybody. To give you a hint, take note that the string itself is inextensible, which means that this portion of the string is always constant. Let us call that portion B. When this block moves a certain distance here, this block will move down half the distance because the length of the cord that is moved will be distributed evenly across, right? So half will go to the right and half will go to the left. Which means that if block 1 moves off with a certain acceleration A, Block 2 will move off with what? With half that acceleration. In other words, 
let me sh now to prove this to you let's call this distance x1 moved by block 1 this distance here will be x2 and this distance here will be x2 so the total length of the string l will be equal to x1 plus x2 plus x2 plus b which is equal to x1 plus 2x2 plus b now the change in length which is 0 is equal to the change in x1 plus 2 times the change in x2 plus the change in b since the length of the string is fixed this guy is 0 and this guy is 0 this would mean that the change in x1 is equal to what? 2 times the change in x2 if you divide it by the time that elapses you would have here v1 equal to 2v2 and if you still divide by the time that elapses you have here a1 is equal to what? 2a2 so you recognize that the acceleration of block 2 is basically half the acceleration of y, block 1 and that is a relationship now if we do a free body diagram here this will be I will go back this will be 2mg this is T this is T this is mg that is n and that is t so if I translate this if I translate the free body diagram we'll have t mg n we have 2 mg and we have 2 t understand that we will take the direction of motion to be positive we will take the direction of motion to be positive in which case for block 1 the direction of motion is like that for block 2 the direction of motion is downward yes please because there are two strings you see that right mm -hmm. good question so for for block one we have t equal to ma for block two we have 2mg minus t equal to 2m what will be the acceleration here if the acceleration of block one is a the acceleration of block two will be 2a do you remember this so um, this is equation 1 and that is equation 2 conveniently if we add the t's cancel so you have 2mg equal to what 4 plus 5 equal to 5 ma this would mean that the acceleration <coughs> is 2 over 5 g this is the acceleration of block 1 oh we made a mistake somewhere and you didn't even say a thing this is minus 2t um, so if we add if you multiply this by 2 and this by 2 and add the two t's will cancel so you'll be left with 2 mg equal yes one half equal to this is 4 this is 6 mg which means that the acceleration is one third a this is the acceleration of block 1 therefore the acceleration of block 2 is two third a yeah to third g not a using this you can determine the tension in the string t 
is equal to MA which is just gonna be M bracket so it's one third MG and that will be the tension in the string example 3 now in this example we will assume that all pulleys are massless and at the same time we will take the direction of motion to be positive the question will be to derive expressions for acceleration and the tension in the string everybody in class get to work do that please start with your free body diagrams on the walls and on the boards get busy please note that m2 is greater than m1 that will tell you the direction of acceleration all right thank you now remember in solving these pulley problems they are just three steps the first step is to draw your free body diagram so let's do that we have here m1g this is t we have here m2g and that is t now m1 is accelerating upwards and m2 is accelerating downwards if i move on to the next slide and rewrite my free body diagram this will be m1g this is t which is accelerating upwards this will be M2G and this is T which is accelerating downwards now having drawn your free body diagram keeping in mind that the direction of motion is positive then we can separately listen we can separately apply Newton's second law to block one and to block two. And Newton's second law basically states that the net external force acting on an object is equal to its mass times what? Its acceleration. So let's look at block one. The net force it's moving upwards is given by T which is in the positive direction minus m1g which is in the negative direction should be equal to m1a and for block 2 you have m2g which is in the positive direction minus t which is in the negative direction is equal to m2a we have taken the direction of motion to be positive this is a simultaneous equation in terms of what t and a that we can solve an easy way for you to see that if you add up these two equations the t will cancel by the way they are internal forces so we now have here m2g minus m1g equal to m1 plus m2 all multiplied by a this would mean that the acceleration a is equal to m2 minus m1 divided by m1 plus m2 all multiplied by g and that gives you the acceleration of the system the next step is for us to calculate the tension in the string and if we do that we can either use equation 1 or equation 2 looking at equation 1 T 
will be equal to M1G plus M1A which is M1G plus M1A is simply M2 minus M1 M1 plus M2 all multiplied by G if this is an exam you can leave your answer this way and you will earn all your credit but I'm going to simplify anyway so T will be equal to M1 square G plus M1 M2 G plus M1 M2 G minus M1 square G divided by M1 plus M2 this would mean that T remember this goes off with this you are left with what 2 M1 M2 divided by M1 plus M2 all multiplied by G the next example now instead of I'm going to insert the third block in between this is M this is 2M and that is 3M remember now there are two strings in the system we need to calculate the acceleration of the system and the tension in the string all surfaces are frictionless and all pulleys are massless same all same all we start by doing what drawing our free body diagram this is mg this is t1 t1 2mg and t2 3mg t2 you recognize that in this string the tension is t1 and in this string the tension is t2 how much time is left pardon okay still we will take the direction of motion to be positive block 1 accelerates upward block 2 accelerates to the right and block 3 accelerates downward so the free body diagram separately will look at like this is mg t1 accelerating upwards t2 t1 2 mg n and we will have 3 mg t2 accelerating downwards so applying newton's second law separately for each mass separately for each mass we have for block one it's accelerating upwards so this will be t1 minus m1 mg equal to ma and for block two you will have t2 minus t1 equal to 2ma and for block 3 we have 3mg minus t2 equals to 3ma this is equation 1 equation 2 and equation 3 how nice clearly if we add the three equations the t1 cancels and the t2 cancels not surprising so we will have 3mg minus mg all of this should be equal to 6ma which means that 2mg is equal to 6ma the m's can go away 
and the acceleration will be what? 1 over 3g. Given the fact that we know what our acceleration is, we can use this value to calculate the tension in string 1 and uh, in string 2. So we know that T1 minus MG is equal to MA. This means that T1 is MG plus MA, which is just MG plus mg divided by what? 6 and that will give us 7 over 6 mg. Similarly, we have 3 mg minus t2 equal to 3 ma. This would mean that t2 is equal to 3 ma minus 3mg minus 3ma, which is just going to be 3mg minus mg over 2, which is going to be 5 over 2mg. So successfully, we have shown that A is equal to G over 6, T1 is equal to 7 over 6, mg and uh, t2 is equal to 5 over 2 mg yes please i thought we said earlier that um, a equals one third yeah. is it one third or one six one -third. oh one third so this should be one third and that will give you four thirds g and uh, and this will give us two mg. Example We will assume that all surfaces are frictionless and all pulleys are massless So the question would be to derive the expressions for the acceleration of the system under the tension in the strings in the string now you have to start this by drawing a free body diagram everybody Now look up everybody, we can resolve the weight, this will be mg, m2g, cosine theta, m2g, sine theta. Now remember we will take the direction of motion to be positive. So for M1, we have T equal to M1A. For M2, we have M2G sine theta minus T equal to M2A. That is equation 1 and this is equation 2. You will definitely realize that
that if we add the two equations, the t's will cancel. And if that is the case, we will have m2g sine theta equal to m1 plus m2 all multiplied by a. And uh, this means that the acceleration a is given by m2g sine theta divided by m1 plus m2. This is the acceleration of the system. Consequently, the tension T is equal to M1A, which is just going to be M1, M2G, sine theta, all divided by M1 plus M2. That is the expression for the acceleration T. Great. Um, everybody get to the boards and do this one. The diagram is not drawn to scale. Start first by doing a free body diagram. All surfaces are smooth, meaning there is no friction, and the pulley is massless. So get on with your work, please. You have five minutes. Calculate the tension of the, the tension in the string and the acceleration of the system. How many minutes more do we have? Look up please. We start with our free body diagram. Remember, weight always acts vertically downwards. We can resolve the weight. This angle here is theta. So this is mg cosine theta. This is mg sine theta. This is 3 mg cosine theta. 3 mg sine theta. The direction of motion is like that. Understand that we are taking the direction of motion to be positive. In which case, for m1, the first block, we have T minus mg sine theta is equal to ma for block 2. We have 3 mg sine theta minus t is equal to 3 ma. This is equation 1 and this is equation 2. If we add up equation 1 and 2, whatever method you choose to, you end up with what? 3 mg sine theta minus mg sine theta all equal to 4 ma this would mean that 2 mg sine theta will be equal to what 4 ma and the acceleration a is half g sine theta who had this correct okay great all the groups now the tension t from equation 1 is ma plus mg sine theta this is just going to give us half mg sine theta plus mg sine theta and this will give us 3 over 2 mg sine theta who got t correctly okay great great uh, the next and the last example This is rough the coefficient of friction here mu k is half And uh, the question is for us to calculate the tension in the string 
and the acceleration of the system. Now in this case, look up fellas, we don't have time to do this as a class. This is MG, this is T, this is FK, and that is N, T, 2MG, N, and as usual, we can resolve our weight down here this is 2 mg sine 30 degrees and this is 2 mg cosine 30 degrees give me a minute please now looking at block one we have t minus fk equal to ma which means that T minus mu mg should be equal to ma. Looking at block 2, we have 2 mg sine 30 degrees minus T equal to 2 ma, which basically means that sine 30 is half, so we have mg minus T equal to 2 ma. This is equation 1. And that is equation 2, which if we add up the T's cancel, we will be left with mg minus mu mg equal to what? 3ma. The m's can carefully go away. And the acceleration is 1 minus mu multiplied by g. This is the acceleration of the blocks, which is a little bit, looks a little different from all the others. Now the tension in the string, we are almost there fellas. We know that um, from equation 2, you can see that T is equal to mg minus 2ma, which is mg minus 2m bracket 1 minus mu g. You can simplify, you will see that T will be equal to mg minus 2 mg plus 2 mg mu and uh, you will end up with a beautiful expression t equal to this will be mg bracket 2 mu minus 1 that is the expression for the tension in the string thank you for your time please and good luck with your test next class